All right. So we talked about um, the church's function and outreaches. Um, I just kind of talked about the idea of ministry. Um, a lot of times people try to do the ministry with the wrong um, mindset, with the wrong heart, right, wrong heart. It's the exact same thing people try to do nowadays with Christianity. They try to do it with, with, the, um, with the wrong mindset, but doing all the right things. It's about the relationship with Jesus Christ, not your perfection. Um, so, uh, this time we're talking about responsibility. What is responsibility? First off, responsibility is not independence. People think that to be responsible, you have to be independent. That's not what the, oh, that's that, that's not right. But you also don't have to be completely dependent. There is once again a balance. See the people who advocate responsibility being independent say you need to get off government assistance. You need to uh, you know um, I can't think of anything right now. You need to get a job. You need to um, to to buy a house. You need to you know do all these different things. Okay, first off, let's wind down here. Not everybody should go to college. Not everybody should buy a house. Okay, these are things that need to be clarified. Um, and also, there are some reasons that people, the, the government has to assist people because the church isn't doing their job. See, in 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 Paul's day, the churches didn't necessarily tithe so much as they gave everything that they had to the church, and so that everybody could be better off. Did that sink in? They gave up everything that they had so that everyone would be better off. Barnabas, for instance, sold all this stuff and gave the money to the church. And that was able to help other people. They were able to raise raise funds for the widows and stuff. Um, and so that would obviously not be an independence, now would it? But those who advocate responsibility of being dependent are usually the people who live in their parents' house and don't really take care of things. Once again, it's not. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be extremes. You can live in the middle somewhere. You know, where like for instance, me. I'm pretty dependent. I've noticed on the pastor. Am I able to do my job? Yeah, I'm able to do my job. I do my job very well. In fact, my, the pastor does his job very well. But we do depend on each other. That makes sense. And we hand, we take care of things. So there is, independence and dependence are not the same as responsibility, okay? Responsibility is being accountable, having a duty, the ability to meet obligations, keeping your word. This is responsibility. Independence is being governed by self, living apart from others. As Christians, we're not supposed to be independent anyways. We're supposed to be dependent on each other in the church and that we're all there for each other. Okay, uh, we're supposed to not be governed by ourselves, but by Christ, right? Right. Um, dependence is relying solely on another. We're, neither view is, is is good or right, I should say. Um, responsible Christians are neither fully dependent or independent. So we're not even talking about independence or dependence. And get it out of your mind that they're the same thing because they're not the same thing. Um, so. That is, the def that is the definition of responsibility. Now, let's talk about a Christian work ethic. This is how responsibility applies to your life. Um, so, more responsible living. First off, finish what you start. And this may seem like a like a like a oh that's that's pretty simple, but actually you'd be surprised how much even I'm sure you uh, don't don't do this. Um, Matthew seven twelve says. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Um, this is what we do. We do. We start a project, and then we have to go somewhere else. Or we see that a project needs done, and we kind of start it, but then we just kind of leave it for later. Finish what you start. When you start something, stay there till you finish it, and then and then clean up and, and move on to the next thing. Um, you husbands, your wife has has you a, a to do list, right? And you start on something that goes on for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and, weeks and it just keeps going. Obviously, your wife's going to get pretty upset at you. Just do it. Finish it and move on. Um, don't expect others to finish it. I see a lot of drug addicts and people who get out of, out of drugs do this. They start something and all gung ho, but then they just expect someone else to finish it. No, no, no. When you start something, you finish it. See it through to the end. 
Don't expect others to finish it, and don't leave until you're done. Another th thing I see um, a lot of potheads do this um, when, when we're trying to when we're trying to um, help them. Uh, they will they'll start something like okay they'll work for you, but then they'll get there at like let's say 10 o'clock, and then they'll leave at 10:30 because they have to go uh, do something, and then they have to and then they'll be back at like 12, and then they have to go eat lunch at 12:40, but then they'll be back at like 1:40, and then they have to go to the store to get something for their wife. See what I mean? No, no, get there and finish, and then move on. See what I mean? And, and so what we need to do is make sure that when you're scheduling out your day, make sure that you're not scheduling things in the hours you're going to be at work. Don't double book things. Oh, yeah, honey, I'll run to the store, store about 3. Well, I'm going to be at work at 3. I can't be at two places at one time, can I? So tell your wife that you'll do it um, after or do it before. Um, but don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, don't be irresponsible. Uh, don't take another job till this job one, um, another job till this one is done. Uh, oftentimes, I've learned this: people will get a job and they won't be content, so they'll start looking for another job. But then they'll quit their job before they even get hired on another job. This is how you do that: you get a job, you work. It doesn't have to be a, the greatest job; just a job to bring some form of income in. And then, once you, once you have another job that, that 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 has accepted to hire you at a certain date, you give in your two week notice. Make sure that 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 they know you can't hire them, they can't hire you until two weeks, then get, give it to your employer that, that you, will be leave, you, will, you will be leaving in two weeks, and then have the start date of the new job be the day after the last day of the old job. That way there's no interruption in pay. I ran into this, this one guy needed money, he needed rent money is what he wanted, and I guess he wanted us to just pay the rent money. So instead I helped him get a job. And lo and behold, he found a better job. And so he quit his job while he was waiting for this other job. So obviously he couldn't afford his rent. And so he's waiting to start the work of the other job. And I said, look, buddy, like, why didn't you just wait and then go to your job once it was ready for them? And it turns out that the, they changed their mind and they didn't want to hire him after all. It, he was just taking it on a good word of faith that they were going to hire him. So, I mean, that's irresponsibility. Um, when, also, when you start a job, do it in a timely manner. Yes, I'll put up those shelves for you. Start it at 8 o'clock or whenever you want to start, right? And then finish it. And do it in a timely manner. Don't have people waiting for months and months as to whether you're going to do it or not. Don't take a bunch of breaks or trips. You get there at, like, say, at 9, for instance, and leave at 5. Have yourself a 30-minute or an hour-long lunch and have that be your standard. Keep track of this stuff. Don't let, don't let the time just slip away. Well, we're going to talk about this later with the lazy person. What makes somebody lazy? What is laziness? Because people definitely have a wrong idea of what laziness is. Um, and remember, you're there to do a job. That is, that is your purpose in being there. Sometimes people forget this when they, when they, have, when they come from a, a little bit of an irresponsible background. Is they forget why they're there, and so they're just kind of there to, to get their money and then they leave. You're there to do the job. That's what you're there for. Um, also, go to work to make your boss successful. Um, whenever I see this one, people are, oh. yeah, I know, it sounds crazy, but trust me, it actually does work. You are there to make your boss successful. That's, that's actually your job. If your boss can't count on you, then you're not going to get a raise, and you're not going to be able to uh, benefit of your, for your boss, and you're never going to be able to get a better job. Um, um, don't always pretend to know, every, know, know more than your boss. Just do what he tells you to do. I mean, goodness sakes, it's not a competition. He's your boss. He told you to do something, just do it. We, we make things way too complicated. Do something to make your boss successful. Uh, go to work whether you feel like it or not. Um, I, I have a really hard time um, getting potheads to understand this point. Um, they'll, they'll say stuff like, um, you know, oh, well, I just don't feel real well today, or I have a headache, or, or and I'm not downplaying that. I understand that, that, um, that, that you may be going through something, and I get that. However, that's not what's, what's res, what responsibility is. Responsibility is I have a job and I'm going to be there to do it. I'm going to be there at this time because that's the time that they expect me there. I'm going to do exactly what, what they expect me to do, if not more than they expect me to do. And I'm going to, I'm going to work to be of benefit to my boss so that I can keep my job. And then when the day's over, I'm going to go home and I'm going to manage my money responsibly. I'm going to manage my family responsibly. So you know, it, it's a thing that – responsibility is not something that you put on for work. It's something that you do in life. Uh, so feelings don't dictate actions. 
Okay, um, I was talking to someone and, and they converted to Mormonism because they felt secure. It doesn't matter how you feel there. It matters whether or not it's true or not. Once again, feelings don't dictate actions. When you're going through a panic attack, don't do what you feel like doing. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna die. <laughs> no, you're not. Just calm down, okay? Feelings are not gonna dictate. You cannot dictate this. You may feel like you're going to die, but remember, these these, these things aren't actual. They aren't truth. What you have to do is you just have to stop for a second. Gain control over your emotions and allow yourself to think and to act responsibly and mature. Did you notice how I slowed my speech? It helps you to calm down when you do things slower. So, don't let your feelings dictate you. Slow down. Take control over your feelings. You don't do things because they feel good. You do them because it's either right or wrong. Um, sometimes you have to work while you're sick. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you have to do that. And you know what? It sucks, but you still have to do it because you have to afford rent. You have to afford uh, food. I mean, these are things that you have to do, right? Um, and I do want to uh, dispel some, uh, um, um, an idea about college. College is not for everyone. College is for someone who want to go, who need to do a specific thing and they need a specific degree to do that, th that thing, okay? Um, college is for those who have the foresight to know what they're what they're doing. If you don't know what you're going to be doing when you grow up, you shouldn't go to college. <laughs> Goodness sakes, unless you, there, there's a good chance of it, or it's a degree that, that will really help you get a job anywhere. In which case, you should do it while you're young, so that way while you're still figuring things out, at least you have a degree and you didn't just waste four years of your life. So, uh, but sometimes trade schools will be better. And also keep in mind that you can become overqualified for a job. Um, and let's say you know you have all these different degrees and stuff, and, and they just wanted someone with a master's. They're probably not going to hire you because they're going to think that it's going to be too much money. So, um, <clears throat> do you want to be a dependable? Do you want to have running water, electricity, and gas? Do you want to get out of debt and have money for food? Keep this in mind for motivation. Do you want to get out of debt? Are you tired of people calling you asking for asking for, or, or telling you that you need to pay back the bills? Are you tired of getting turned down for, for home loans and all kinds of different things because of bad credit? Be responsible. Be responsible. Your boss pays your bills. This hits a lot of people as by surprise. Your boss pays your bills. You work, then they pay you, and that money goes to the bills. Your boss pays your bills. Why I really pound this in is because in my area, there's a lot of people who are on welfare that just kind of forget that the, it's not the government's responsibility to provide for everyone. The government's responsibility is to govern. Okay, the church should be providing for the needs of people, um, and for those of, who, for those of us who are able to work, we should be working. If there's no job, start a business. I mean, goodness sakes, it's America, right? You're supposed to be able to. There's supposed to be the idea of capitalism. Um, I'm not really a fan of capitalism, but I understand that in America it's kind of the thing to do. So I mean, you might as well do it since you're here. Um, your boss pays your bills. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you're you can either be dependent on the government, or you can earn the money and get the th and do the things that you want to do. See what I mean? Um, and when you're working, do it as though you were working for God. Would you do a better job if it was God that you were working for? Well, then you should do a better job. Um, never forget that. Your boss pays your bills. So 1 Corinthians 10.31. Um, 10.31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And it's the same kind of idea. I know he's talking about something else here, but it does apply here. Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. You shouldn't be like in church, oh, worship Jesus, yay. And then when you, when your boss's back is turned, talking bad about him. Well, he hired you. How big of an idiot could he be if he hired you? So I mean, like, you shouldn't you shouldn't crap where you live. <laughs> you, um, or eat. You shouldn't crap where you eat. Um, he hired you, and, and then by bad-mouthing him, you're going to lose your job. What if he hears about it? One guy put, was ranting on Facebook, and his boss found out about it because it's social media, duh, and uh, uh, he fired him. 
one chick, it was a, it was a couple weeks ago, said something on Twitter, and uh, she was completely oblivious. And when she, her plane landed, she found out that she'd been fired. Wow, things change pretty rapidly. Um, don't don't give up because the going gets tough. Oftentimes, well, well, this job is really hard. I'm not really doing a good job. You don't give up. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Do it. Um, uh, especially, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right uh, flat out. If you have never had a job, or if you haven't had a job for a number of years, it's going to be very difficult. Especially the uh, the structure is going to be very hard to hard to adapt to. Don't give up because the going gets tough. You keep sticking it through. It doesn't matter if your boss or others don't like you. It doesn't matter. Uh, you, you don't work based off others' feelings about you. You can do it. Keep your head up. Oh, well, my boss didn't like me or, or he was a racist. It doesn't matter what his personal feelings are. You're there to get paid. Do you know I mean? You're there to do a job, so do it. Um, James 1, 2 through 4. And obviously you don't have to act like you're there to get paid, but I mean... Let's be honest. If we didn't have to have to work have to work for a living, most of us wouldn't be at work. Most of us would be spending time with our kids, or doing a hobby or something like that. James one two through four. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of, of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. I kind of went farther than I wanted to. Don't give up because the going gets tough. <clears throat> do the best job you can, and when you said you would do it. Okay? Don't put things off. Oh, well, this came up do it. See what I mean? What we try to do is we find excuses as to why why we should not be dependable. It's by our nature we are very selfish. People are just selfish. That's just nature. So you don't really need any help being selfish. So realize that and do the job when you said you would do it. And don't let things come up. Oh, something's come up. Well, it really wasn't that big of a deal. I will I'll do that after I'm done with what I said that I would do in the first place. Okay? Um, let me give you an example. Um, I uh, Okay, here's one. Um, I told my friend that I would be over to help him uh, move. Okay. Now, um, it turns out that your wife was wanting you to take her to town to find something that she needed to cook something for dinner. Well, I understand that dinner is important, but you already made an agreement. See what I mean? That's being responsible. Do the job you said you would when you said you would do it. Don't just do the job, do it well. There's a difference between just getting something done and doing it to the best of your ability. There is a huge difference. Do it as you would want them to do it for you. Is that how you would want your stuff returned to you? Is that how you how you would want it done if if uh, somebody was doing that 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 favor for you? Just throwing your boxes anywhere? Never leave an employer asking, will they finish? Your employer should know that you're accountable and that you start and finish things in a timely manner, that, that you do what he tells you what he tells you to do. Uh, so try to start and finish the same day if at all possible. There's some things like building a house that can't be done in a day, no matter how good you are or how many people you have. It's just not going to happen. Don't leave projects running. Finish as soon as you can. Don't leave projects running. James 5.12 says... Um, Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Um, and obviously, this is talking about something else, but still, it, the principle applies to what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, go out of your way to do a good job, to serve others, to do a job completely, to make someone else's job easier. This really shocks people. Go out of my way? Yes, go out of your way. Be responsible. To serve others others complete and to do a job completely well I could finish in another hour but my favorite show is coming on I mean you can we can rewatch the show I mean they'll have it online probably they'll they'll probably sell it in the future or you could have somebody or you could record it or something like that but you could just finish the job see what I mean um, and to make someone else's job easier um, Oh, it's, I'm just walking, walking through the parking lot, and there's a piece of trash, but I'm not the janitor. 
well, just go out of your way and pick up the trash. It'll make the other person's job easier. See what I mean? Um, put up what you get out. Um, this used to be something that uh, we taught our kids to do. Um, however, in recent society, it's kind of lost its umph. Use it, then put it up to keep your area clean and to prevent the thing from getting damaged. You understand that? When you use something, use it. By all means, go ahead and use it. But then, put it up. Keep your space clean. Keep what was in your response. If you have a desk, keep it clean. Um, this will prevent the things from getting damaged or lost. Um, um, and, and, it'll, and it'll help help you be able to find things. It'll keep, it'll keep things in good, good condition. Bosses and others notice when you take care, and others will grow to trust you. Okay? You will gain opportunities in your life. Your boss will more than likely want to give you a promotion. Um, I know someone who's a felon. Okay? He's, a, he's, he's considered a lifelong criminal, and someone hired him. Okay? And not just someone who hired him out in the boons. It's actually a, a, a professional um, establishment. And uh, he, he's so clean and neat and orderly that they want to make him a night manager. And he's only been there for like two or three weeks. See what I mean? It, bosses will notice. Um, put it up in better condition than you found it. Clean it off when you're done using it. Uh, like if we're talking about a vacuum, for instance, um, make sure that the, there's no none of those things caught in the bristles. You know those uh, those stringy things. Uh, replace or fix it if it breaks. You're using the vacuum and the belt breaks. So put a new belt on. Oh, that'll cost me money. Well, were you using something that wasn't yours? Yes. Then return it in better condition than you found it. I was in Royal Rangers, which is it's kind of like Boy Scouts. Um, and they taught us whenever we went to a campground to always leave the campground cleaner than we than we than it was when we when we when when when, when we went there. God, to le always leave the campground cleaner than when we went there. Um, and 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 many rangers would all, would tell us, you guys are the cleanest people we've ever had up here. We didn't have to clean anything, and that was what we always strived for. If we didn't get a compliment from the rangers, we took it as an insult. We, were, we always made sure we put it in, up in better condition than we found it, okay? And whatever that it is, it can be a park, it can be your house, it can be a, a vacuum, it can be a car. If you use something from somebody else, and besides that, you shouldn't use someone else, something from someone else unless you're able to fix it or replace it if it breaks. Otherwise, don't use it. Um... <clears throat> God has entrusted you with your job, your money, your time, and your belongings. Be wise with it. Be wise with how you use it and um, with the things that you allow. Um, remember that your job, God entrusted that job to you. Your money, God entrusted that money to you. Don't spend it on just whatever you want. Uh, your time, God only, there's only so many hours in anybody's life. And there's so many hours in a day anyways, and it's all the same for everybody. So it's not like your hours are any shorter than someone else's. You need to learn to manage your time. God has entrusted you with these things. Be wise with its use. Matthew 25, 29 says, For whoever his has um, has will be given more, and, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have, will be taken from them. Um, always put others' needs first. Um, I think that one pretty much... That's... That's a principle, and it's pretty easy to understand, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. If an emergency comes up, call your boss as early as possible. Let me define what an emergency is. Death. That's an emergency. Now, I'm not talking about your great aunt, whatever. I'm talking about someone who you're actually close to. Like, your wife. Yourself. <laughs> um, your, you know, someone like that. Your father. These are people who, oh, wow, they just died? You know, that that's different. Let me give you an example. In in the in the book of Genesis, Jacob and Esau are at each other's throats. Jacob did something and Esau's mad at him. And the mom thinks that she has to intervene. So she tells Jacob to go run, you know, because Esau is going to kill him whenever the dad dies. Well, fifteen years later the, the dad still is not dead. So that fifteen years that he spent in exile was not even necessary. See what I mean? It was not an emergency, but the mom thought it was an emergency. Make sure it's an emergency. Don't inconvenience your boss with your personal issues. I mean, goodness sakes, you are there to do a job, not to not not to tell everybody else your woes. 
Do you want the job or don't you want the job? Do you want to have money to buy the things that you need or do you not want money? It's that simple. Your house is on fire. There is a good excuse, not excuse, reason, emergency. Don't give excuses. Um, your wife goes into labor. There is an excellent emergency. So, I mean, these are things, and don't say that they're happening if they're not actually happening. That's about as irresponsible as you can get. Is you suspect, suspect your boss is going to fire you, ask how to do a better job. For some reason, I see some people, oh, well, my job was, my, my uh, boss is going to fire me anyways. So you beat him to the punch and fired yourself? I wouldn't have done that. Uh, wait till he actually does fire you. Um, Um, and, and also, if you think he's going to fire you, just simply ask, hey, um, what can I do better? How can I do a better job? Is there, some, is there a reason why you're not happy with my service? And in so asking, he will probably tell you, yes, you spend too much time texting while you're working. I don't even want to see the phone out while you're working. You're here to work. Oh, okay. Uh, you spend way too much time with customers. You're not friendly enough to customers. You know, there are reasons for these things. And find out what the reason is, fix it, apologize. Um, in fact, on the next slide, um, actually, I don't think it made it to the slide. Oh, I didn't even put this on the slide. Um, Give a two-week notice when you intend to quit, and don't quit until you have a new job. I already kind of mentioned this. Um, not everyone is doing it. Um, I really can't believe I didn't put that on the slide. Um, so apologize for any attitude or failure, and don't quit until you're fired. I think that's a pretty good principle just all around. Um, apologize for any attitude. Is it an attitude problem or any failure that, that you didn't fulfill your job requirements? Okay, it's not it's not it's not uncalled for for your boss to expect you to fulfill the job requirements you were hired for. Um, <clears throat> and don't quit until you're fired. Once you're fired, then go and then, then then obviously go get another job. But if you haven't even been fired, don't beat your boss to the punch. Give two week notice when you intend to quit. Don't quit till you have a new job. I, I don't think that really needs much more elaboration. Also, not everyone is doing it. For instance, maybe a group is doing it. Like, when I talked to a lot of druggies, they say this, everyone's doing drugs, man. No, actually, everyone you're hanging out with is doing drugs. Maybe it's popular. Maybe there's a lot of people doing it who you hang around with or maybe something like that, but not everybody's doing it. Uh, don't allow any, any, uh, another person's poor decisions to become your poor decisions. Oh, well, they're doing it, so that means I should do it. No. If somebody shot and killed your son, for instance, would you say it's okay to go and shoot somebody else's son? Well, no, that's just about stupid as can be. You don't you don't allow someone else's poor, poor decisions to, make, to become your poor decisions and to influence you to make poor decisions. Example, if all your coworkers are smoking pot in the break room, don't go into the break room. Or, uh, you know, I guess you could report them, I guess, if you're comfortable with that kind of a thing. But a lot of times people say, I don't want to be snitched. Well, okay, so don't go into the break room. Um, also, don't let money burn a hole in your pocket. Sometimes we get money and we just, we instantly, all these things that we want to buy, we have our Amazon wish list, and it's just, we just cannot wait to buy the next thing. We just, oh, we want so much. So the money literally burns a hole through our pocket. And we're going to go ahead and stop there, and uh, we'll pick up next lesson with the rest of this.